time to discuss the Implicit Association Test, the IAT, which is now the most popular tool for measuring implicit bias. Just to be clear, the test itself, a reaction time measure, isn't the same thing as the underlying construct, implicit bias. It's just a quick and dirty measurement device. The best way to understand the IAT is to take a test yourself, which you can do easily and anonymously at Project Implicit. For now, I'll offer a quick synopsis. Understanding the IAT, and indeed all reaction time measures, begins with a basic insight. It's always easier for our brains to sort two concepts together if they are closely associated in our minds. For example, if I say the word dog and ask you to complete this word, you'll be quicker to think cat than bat. Or if I say the word doctor, you will be quicker to think nurse than purse. Armed with this insight, scientists created the IAT, which measures how quickly we sort various pictures and words flash on a computer screen together. Our sorting speed reflects how tightly we associate any two concepts. Quicker sorting means stronger association. The black-white race attitude test, for example, compares implicit attitudes toward two racial categories, black folks and white folks. Each racial category is represented by cropped photos of male faces. To begin, you're asked to sort the faces as quickly as possible. If you see a white face, hit a key to your left. If you see a black face, hit a key to your right. Next, you sort words that represent two attitudinal categories, good and bad. When you see a good word, such as beauty, hit a key to your left. When you see a bad word, such as filth, hit a key to your right. Now the real challenge starts. You're instructed to sort both photos and words, whatever flashes on the screen. For some runs, you are instructed to press the same key for white faces and good words, say on your left, and a different same key for black faces and bad words, say on your right. If you have a more positive association with white folks as compared to black folks, then in this particular arrangement, you will find your groove and fly through the test. Most of us do. But on other runs, which are randomized and counterbalanced, the IAT will give you different directions. Press the same key for white faces and bad words, and another same key for black faces and good words. In these runs, most players can't quite get into a groove, take longer to respond, and make more mistakes by hitting the wrong key. The average time differential between the two arrangements, white plus good as compared to black plus good, is called the IAT effect and reflects the strength of an attitude. On average, we might be a fraction of a second faster, pairing white faces with good words than black faces with good words. This means that on average, we have an implicit preference for whites. Over nearly two decades, millions of people have taken implicit association tests hosted by Project Implicit. These tests have measured everything from racial attitudes to gender associations to preferences for one political candidate over another. The results are overwhelming. Implicit biases, measured by reaction times, are systematic and pervasive. They are statistically significant, which means they are not due to chance. On average, our implicit attitudes, which, to remind you, are overall valences toward a category, predictably favor certain groups over others. 80% of participants prefer young over old, 69% thin over overweight, 68% white over black, 76% able-bodied over disabled. Our implicit stereotypes, which are specific trade associations, are also predictable. 72% of participants associate blacks with weapons as opposed to harmless objects. 61% associate Asians with the foreign as opposed to American. 72% associate women with humanities as opposed to math. 76% associate women with family as opposed to career. Pervasiveness does not mean that every single person has the exact same amount of bias. There's wide variability across individuals and groups. For instance, most whites have an implicit preference for whites over blacks, but African Americans show no preference on average. But there's a natural bell curve around that zero average, with about a third of African Americans also showing an implicit attitude in favor of whites over blacks. Unfortunately, no one is immune.
but this doesn't mean that we're powerless. To learn more, watch my final video in this series, Lesson 6, Countermeasures.